Howdy everyone. So last time we talked about the topic of scale for the purpose of subsurface data analytics, geostatistics, modeling. What we'll do is we'll get more analytical, talk about scaling relations, get into concepts of gamma bar, dispersion variance. I want to acknowledge that for this, these slides right here, they're highly inspired. Some of them are modified directly from course material from Dr. Clayton Perch from the University of Alberta, my PhD advisor. I appreciate his generosity with regard to his course material. So in order to get started with this, with more analytical type of solutions, we need a spatial continuity measure that accounts for volume. We can't work with the varigram that we're using right now. The varigram we calculate right now is from sample value to spatial sample value. And it does not have the ability to count for perhaps we're dealing with making comparisons between things that have two different scales or that we're working with something that has a very large scale and we want to integrate over that volume. It assumes all the data, all the estimated locations all have the same scale. We introduced the volume integrated varigram known as the gamma bar as a methodology to directly count for spatial continuity while explicitly counting for the scale. The way we're going to calculate a gamma bar value, pretty straightforward. We're going to integrate a varigram model. We calculate a positive definite varigram model. We've already got that. Then what we'll do is we'll integrate that varigram model while the tail of the vector is able to scan or be integrated over one volume and the head of the varigram vector is scanned or integrated over another volume. That would be the gamma bar between little v, big V would be if we scan the tail of the lag vector over little v and the head of the lag vector over big V. Now of course we could represent that as a double integral where we're in fact taking an integral over big V, integral over little v, and we are scanning all the possible tail to head locations over those two volumes. Now, of course, we can also do the same thing with a covariance function, because we remember from the spatial continuity discussions of the past that the covariance function is just the sill minus the varigram. We flipped it up upside down. So we'd also want to be able to work with a spatially integrated measure of spatial covariance. That is the degree of similarity between two volumes in space. The calculation, exactly the same as we saw with the varigram. The double integral, but now with the positive definite covariance function. And the tail is once again describing the one volume and the head of the lag vector is describing the other volume. Now, how do we practically calculate gamma bar values? There's not a closed form solution we can use in all generality to be able to calculate this. In fact, what we do is we use a numerical form of integration to be able to calculate it. Pretty straightforward. We just do a discretization of the two volumes with a mesh of nodes. And then we can loop over all the combinations of the nodes within the two volumes in order to get a numerical approximation of our gamma bar or our covariance bar or what we call a C bar value for short by doing that. So we can do that. If you look at the equation, it now becomes instead of a double integral, we have a double sum where we're looping over all of the nodes in little v and all of the nodes in big V. Pretty straightforward. We go to the first node in little v. We calculate the varigram between that node and all of the nodes in big V. And then we go to the next node in little v. Repeat that for so the full combinatorial of nodes between both little v and big V are covered. Take the average of that and the result would be a gamma bar value little v big V. Now how do we interpret a gamma bar or C bar value? What are some ideas that can kind of get you started in thinking in a gamma bar manner, getting your brain tuned to think about gamma bar? So what are some of the points we can make about gamma bar? First of all, if you have a large gamma bar, little v, big v, that indicates a large amount of variability between the volume, little v, and big v. So it really is a measurement still 
of the variability between the two volumes. Now, what's very interesting is the gamma bar approach is completely general. In fact, you can do gamma bar little v little v between a volume and itself. And if you do that, what's interesting is it's now a measure of the degree of variability within that volume. And if you increase the size of that volume, you would expect the little the gamma bar little v little v to actually increase. There's more variability within the volume. So it's really a measure of variability within a volume also, not just between volumes. The other point I should make is that all of that Krieging stuff that we did before, formulating the Krieging matrix, using the covariance values on the left-hand side for redundancy, the values on the right-hand side for closeness, all of that is completely general. In fact, we can go ahead and replace the covariance values within the simple Krieging matrix with C bar values that are volume integrated. Now what's happening is we have a measure of the similarity between the data and themselves accounting for their volumes. And if we were doing simulation, it would also include the model cells that had previously been simulated and at probably a very much a different scale than the data themselves. So this is quite powerful. And in fact, we can solve for the creating variance using C-bar values. Everything works with the C-bar values. It's completely general. This is very, very powerful indeed. So now we can introduce a brand new concept. Now, back when we first started talking about uncertainty, we introduced the concept of dispersion variance. And we said that it's a general form of variance that accounts for the support size, the scale of the data or the thing that you're measuring. Now, that means that variance is just one specific form. The commonly applied variance that everybody here knows and loves and works with all the time, in fact, is the dispersion variance indicated or noted as a D squared dispersion variance of a point representing the native data support size within the area of interest that is equal to the variance of the property of interest. So that's extremely powerful. In fact, if you want to try to understand how to calculate a dispersion variance, it's no different than calculating a regular variance. You can go ahead and calculate the dispersion variance of little v, little v, big V, simply as the expectation of the square difference between the little v support data values within the big V model, big V volume, represented by the mean or effective property over that volume. And if you did that, you would actually calculate the dispersion variance, little v, big V. But we will show you right afterwards, we've drawn some parallels here, but we'll show you shortly that there's much more sophisticated ways that we can deal with dispersion variance, calculate it, and use it for the purpose of supporting our modeling and being able to account for scale. All right, so, that's the end of the introduction of the concept of gamma bar, a little bit of discussion of dispersion variance. In the next section, we'll get much more into how we work with these to scale statistics. We'll go much more deeper into dispersion variances, show some examples. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. I am Michael Perch. I'm a professor, at, associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also the Geostat guy on Twitter, on GitHub and YouTube. And I'm always happy to discuss. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help out. And I hope this is helpful to you. All right. Thank you. Take care.